Hi. It's been a long time since we did any videos on the home lighting project and I wanted to do an update today and a little bit more work on it. So uh, some of you may not have even seen this. It is a very long time, probably about 18 months since we last did a video on any of this stuff. Uh, all of these PCBs were made for us by our video sponsor, JLC PCB. And the general essence of the project was we started renovating the house and particularly in the bedroom, for example, we had um, some LED down lights. These are LED down lights that are powered by mains, but they are suitable for use with LED dimmers. However, uh, my experience with those dimmers, and we have still got some in the house, is that they don't actually work very well for a lot of different LED retrofits, these GU10 LEDs. They're quite finicky as to the driver that you type want to use, but also because they are connected in series with the LED lights, a lot of them struggle, struggle to dim to very low light levels because they actually need a certain amount of current to actually um, allow the dimmer to work. So what I wanted to do was design a basic uh, LED dimmer module that would work much better than the ones that you can get off the market. And in particular in the bedroom, for example, we wanted the ability to change the brightness at multiple places. So one at the door, for example, and then one either side of the bed, which means that if you use the standard sort of rotary dimmers, you can't do that from more than one location. So I wanted to use one of these retractable switches. So it's a kind of a two way switch. Uh, you can press it up and you can press it down and then it returns to the middle position. And the idea is that when you hold it down, up or down, it will dim the lights up and down. If you just press it briefly, it can turn the lights on and off. And it, I didn't really find anything that suitable on the market. There's lots of commercial solutions, but they're designed for lighting fixtures that are controlled by Dali or zero to 10 volts, not for domestic type lighting. So I started off with what I thought would be a fairly simple project. We designed some of these AC dimmer modules, which I did quite a few videos on and refined the design a little bit. We did lots of testing at different loads and that kind of thing. So you can find uh, some of the videos up here at the link. Uh, but this is a dimmer module that will work right down to the lowest dimming level that those GU10 lights support. And through the microcontrol on here, we can program that minimal level if um, it doesn't work quite right. But these dimming modules are working really well because the electronics on it is powered separately to the LED light. So we don't need to draw some kind of minimum current to get this working. It will always work and it can provide extremely short duty cycles on the AC waveform. So we did some videos on this. And in fact, I do have one of these PCBs made up with a couple of these in it. And I kind of just stuck it in a box uh, because I really needed to get it working in one of the other rooms. Now's the time where I'm doing renovations on the bathrooms upstairs and fi finishing off the main bedroom. And I need to get the rest of this done. So we made all of these different modules. We've got some AC dimmers. We've got some relay modules. Uh, we've got some RGB LED dimmers for 24 or 12 volt use. And I also made this PCB, which some of you will have seen. I think this is one of the first um, JLC PCB uh, assembly service PCBs that got made, in fact. Uh, so that's quite a long time ago now. But this is a PCB that fits in a nice little casing and is designed to fit in the bathroom. And basically it's got a temperature and humidity sensor at the bottom here. It gives a temperature and humidity readout on here and also communicates via RS-485 back to the main board. And the idea is that when the humidity goes over a certain amount, it can turn on the extractor fan in the bathroom. Uh, so when you're having a shower or whatever, it will automatically do that. And the blue PCB is the first spin of the motherboard. And the idea is that we've got all of these inputs at the top here for these various switches. And these switches are designed for mains use. So um, what I thought I'd do with the wiring that I'm putting in the house is make sure that it's all suitable for mains use so we can rip all this out if we need to at some later date and just replace with normal switches. And I made these driver inputs here which have lots of protection and that kind of thing. They're also isolated from the rest of the PCB. However, I made one silly mistake and didn't actually isolate the supply into these switches. So if someone did accidentally connect one of these switches to the mains, it would make the whole PCB live at mains potential. So that's one issue with this main board. Uh, but the idea is that you could plug in up to four of these modules, program the pick depending on what module you had plugged in, and it would do whatever you wanted it to do. Here is revision two of the main board. Very minimal changes. Basically, there was one bug with these GPIO expanders. And basically, uh, I think it, these are open collector or something like that. And I had the LEDs the wrong way round. 
And so I needed some additional pull-up resistors to make them work and they weren't quite as bright as I wanted them. So that was one bug. And then I also added in this isolation DC to DC converter thing so that all of these switches now completely isolated from the mains. And actually the inputs are tolerant to quite high voltage if something went wrong and we applied a voltage across these. But also it provides the minimum wetting current for these types of switches. So it makes sure that we get about 10 milliamps through the switch so the contacts don't get that oxide coating on there. And then also, uh, yeah, just generally fully isolated. So even if something happened to that wiring or if it coupled in some voltage from nearby mains wires, it won't affect any of the electronics in here. And in particular, we've got an RS-485 bus, which is designed to connect these all together and probably to a Raspberry Pi or something like that as well. And it just means that all of that can never become live at mains potential. So this is version two of the PCB and the majority of it was assembled at JLC PCB. However, a lot of parts I still had to assemble at home uh, and also because it's double sided load, I had to do uh, the assembly as you saw in a couple of videos recently when I was testing out some of the soldering irons. So uh, where we are with the project is I've still got quite a bit of firmware to write uh, to make it a bit more uh, parametric in terms of how you set everything up, but all of the functions do work. We can dim all the lights and we can uh, read data from the remote humidity and temperature sensors and that kind of thing. Uh, one thing that I would like to add in is the ability to turn off uh, the lights. For example, my wife is notorious for leaving lights on all over the house. So if we close the front door and set the alarm or whatever, that we can turn off the lights as needed, that kind of thing. Uh, but generally speaking, the firmware is working. I've got a whole bunch of these PCBs. What I want to do now is assemble these into some kind of electrical enclosure. And what I've got, what I've got is quite a large steel IP65 electrical enclosure with some DIN rails in it. And I want to mount these on the DIN rail along with some power supplies and uh, MCBs and that kind of thing, and basically make it quite robust. That chassis is made from metal. It's going to be going in the loft. So uh, we shouldn't be worried too much about fire inside that sealed enclosure. Uh, but what we might also build is some kind of module to check the temperatures okay in there, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and then one other thing, is that I would like a battery backup on this system because this is going to be running from 24 volts. So on that battery backup, rather than roll my own UPS type solution, I just decided to try an off-the-shelf DIN rail mounted unit. So this is a Meanwell DRC40B. You connect a 24 volt sealed lead acid battery or two series 12 volt batteries, apply mains at the bottom here, and then you get an output voltage which is either supplied from the battery or supplied by the power supply unit inside this. And this also keeps those batteries charged. It's got a couple of extra terminals here for battery low and AC OK. However, what I hadn't really appreciated is the output is uh, not regulated to 24 volts. It did say in the description of 24 volt uh, unit, but uh, they're taking a bit of a liberty there. Uh, you need to float charge sealed lead acid batteries and 27.6 is the kind of voltage that you'd charge 24 volts worth of sealed lead acid batteries. However, the output to your electronics is also that same 27.6 volts. And if you lose the AC supply, then you just get the battery voltage directly, which can be anywhere from 27.6, probably down to about 23 volts. So an unregulated output. And unfortunately, although it would have been okay in the original design, uh, we've got DC to DC converters. Nothing on here really operates at 24 volts apart from uh, this DC to DC converter and these are unregulated DC to DC converters so if you put 23 volts in you get 23 volts out if you put 26 you get 26 volts out and unfortunately 27.6 is outside of the maximum input voltage that you can use for these so we need to design another module with some kind of converter to take this output from here and just give it a steady output voltage and keep everything happy on these PCBs. I hadn't originally intended to DIN rail mount these PCBs, so I put holes in the corner, fully expecting to just screw these into some kind of enclosure. However, in this instance, it makes much more sense to try and mount these to a DIN rail along with all the other accessories. So I bought these little clips that you can get off AliExpress. The idea is that uh, this part clips onto the DIN rail, and by putting a screwdriver in this bit at the bottom and unhooking it, you can unclip it from the DIN rail. And you screw your PCB into these two holes, and that's how you mount them. Uh, you probably have one or two, depending on how big your PCB is, to hold it in place. However, I obviously don't have those holes in this PCB. So I've got some inexpensive boards made, again, at JLC PCB. These are plain PCBs, not really anything on it. 
uh, but we've got the mounting holes that match the main PCB here and then the holes in the right place for these DIN rail mounts. Uh, I think these only came to about uh, six or seven dollars or something like that just because of the size uh, but pretty inexpensive and saved me a lot of trouble uh, building something just to mount these to the DIN rail. So let's try screwing these together and seeing if they fit. So unfortunately something's gone wrong here. I've screwed in one of the screws but you can see the second screw hole is slightly offset here and I thought I'd check this loads of times. Uh, if you look at the AliExpress listing for the unit, I think it's the DRG 2 or 3, um, but if you look at the drawing it says 32 millimeters between the centre of the holes. However, if you have a look at these, um, they're all 33 millimeters, not 32. So it looks like either the drawing's incorrect or all of these have been manufactured slightly different. So just a word of warning, if you do buy these off AliExpress, uh, make sure you get them and measure them first before designing something to suit the whole spacing that's in the data sheet. And they are all like that, so it's not just like a manufacturing defect on one device, there's something that's gone wrong uh, in that translation to the measurements. So it looks like if you screw the screws in at a bit of an angle, you can get it to fit okay. And it doesn't seem to abode the PCB at all, so just a slight annoyance there. Uh, but it should still do the job, I don't need to get these boards remade. And so that's the last PCB, we're just going to assemble up four for now. Uh, but what we've got is the DIN rail mounts at the bottom here. Then we've got some um, little plastic spacers. And then the main PCB screwed into those spacers. And basically all of our wiring is going to come out the bottom end and then go off to the various lights and everything like that. So let's plug this all onto the various DIN rails. So this is the back plate for the electrical enclosure. This just bolts into the enclosure and it means that you can easily take this out to do work on it without having to work inside the confines of the enclosure. And the idea is that the mains is going to come in to this isolator at the top here. Then we've got a series of B2 MCBs, so B-curve 2 amp MCBs, that should be alright for most of the circuits that are going to be connected to it. We've got our little UPS module here. The batteries are going to sit at the bottom of the enclosure. And then we've got our PCBs mounted to the various DIN rails on the back plate. And then finally at the bottom here is a series of DIN terminals. And so our wires from the lights and all that kind of stuff are going to connect into here. And then there'll be a separate wiring loom that goes off to the various bits on the PCB so that you don't have to, every time you add a light for example, you can just wire it in here. Uh, you don't have to traipse those wires all the way around to the correct PCB so everything will come out onto the DIN rail at the bottom here. So the next thing I need to do is order some slotted trunking to go around the PCBs and around the terminals. Uh, we're going to have lots of wires going all over the place so you can get some slotted trunking which has slots in the side, you mount it to the back panel and you can slide your wires in, then put the cover on the top and it tidies everything up because there's going to be, like I said, lots of wires going all over the place. In the next video on this particular project, we will design the DC to DC converter that's going to go between the UPS module and these PCBs. So we'll actually do a start to finish design, looking for the parts, working out the correct topology, then designing the electronics and then designing the PCB and then sending it off to get made. So that should be quite interesting. Um, not a huge amount of technical content today on this particular video, but a lot of people won't have seen this project, so I thought I'd introduce it with a real-time update of what I'm actually doing on this project. Uh, I am also going to be revisiting the GPS Discipline and Oscillator project. That stalled because I started making it a little bit too complicated, really, and it turned into a project that I was never going to finish. So I need to step back and see what I really need from that, uh, and then build it probably in a slightly more modular fashion. Uh, so we will be redoing that project. We've got the soldering iron controller as well, which I need to attend to. And then also uh, some switch mode power supplies. So I want to design some AC to DC converters, start to finish again so that we all learn together. Uh, not many people actually manage to get to build an AC to DC converter from scratch. So I think it'd be quite a useful learning exercise. We'll start off with something low power, which should be quite simple, but then try and build something a little bit more ambitious, wind our own coils and that kind of thing. And hopefully we'll learn along the way. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. A big thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring these videos. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well that are really helping keeping the channel going. We've got a few soldering irons to take a look at still. 
Um, but yeah, lots of content to come. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Any comments and thoughts, leave them in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.